Good day to all of you. Welcome to EC Physics. Learn physics as easy as one, two, three. Through this video, I'm going to take you to one of the exciting destinations, which is nothing other than our solar system. As you all might be knowing that our solar system is made up of sun. There are eight planets which are revolving around it, an asteroid belt and various meteors and comets flying in, out, and around the system. Let us go and meet each one of them. First and foremost member is the sun. It is the star in the middle of the solar system and is the most important source of energy on Earth. Sun is made up of hot plasma, primarily of hydrogen and helium. And it is classified as a G-type main sequence star designated as a yellow dwarf that formed approximately 4.5 billion years ago. Inside the sun, there is a massive electromagnetic field which is generated due to the internal convection within the sun. When you compare the size of sun and earth, sun is so huge that its diameter is about 109 times that of earth and it has a mass of about 33 lakh times that of earth. When you compare the mass of the solar system, most of the mass is due to the sun, 99.86% of the total mass of the solar system. Going to the first planet, which is Mercury, it is the smallest of the eight planets in the solar system, and it is the first of the terrestrial planets. As you might be knowing that planets can be classified into two categories. First four of them are land-based, composed mainly of rocky material, and the remaining four are made up of condensed gas. So Mercury is the first of the land-based planets. It has almost no atmosphere to retain heat. Therefore, it has got a wide range of heat from minus 280 degree Fahrenheit to 800 degree Fahrenheit. When you compare Earth and Mercury, Mercury consists of approximately 70 percentage of metallic and remaining silicate material. The Mercury's core is proportionally much larger, whereas its mass is about 6% less than that of Earth. Going to the second planet of Venus, the specialities of Venus is it is also a terrestrial planet and sometimes it is called Earth's sister planet because of their similar size, mass, proximity to the sun and composition. As you can see here, they are look like, right? It has the densest atmosphere of the four terrestrial planets consisting of more than 96 percentage of carbon dioxide. Due to this high concentration of carbon dioxide, there is a massive greenhouse effect in this planet. Therefore, its temperature is too high every time ranging from 863 degree Fahrenheit to 800 degree Fahrenheit. Coming back and landing on our blessed planet Earth, which is the third one from the sun, the densest planet in the solar system, the largest of the solar system's four terrestrial planets, and the only astronomical object known so far to accommodate life. Still, the researches are going on, and till today, the answer to the existence of life elsewhere is a no. Earth is approximately 4.5 billion years old. Earth has got a natural satellite revolving around it. It is called the moon, which is formed around the same time as Earth. As we all know that there are many astronauts who succeeded in landing on the surface of Earth, and we know how the surface of moon looks like, right? Going to the fourth planet, which is Mars, the second smallest planet in the solar system, and it is also a terrestrial planet with a thin atmosphere. Olympus Mons is a shield volcano. It is so tall that it is three times taller than Mount Everest, and which is the largest mountain in the solar system, which is looking like this, stick out of Mars atmosphere. Valles Marineris is one of the largest canyon system in the solar system. And this is how the surface of Mars looks like. Mars has got two small moons. Phobos and Demos. Before we go to the fifth planet, there is an asteroid belt which is located roughly between the first four planets and the remaining four planets. Asteroid belt 
traces its origins to the formation of the solar system. The belt likely never found into the planet due to the immense gravity of Jupiter. The size and composition of the objects in the belt vary widely. As you can see here, it is made up of n number of asteroid materials. But the major portion of the asteroid belt is made up of three protoplanets, Vesta, Pelas, and Hygieia, and there is a dwarf planet, Ceres. This is how the meteor Vesta will be looking like. Going to the fifth planet, Jupiter, the largest planet in the solar system and its specialities are it is a gas giant. The first four were terrestrial, but the remaining is made up of condensed gas with a mass of two and a half times that of the other planets in the solar system combined. Jupiter is primarily composed of hydrogen and quarter part of it is made up of the gas helium. This is how the inner core of Jupiter looks like. The great red spot is an enormous hurricane raging for at least 400 years. The size of this great red spot is so big that it would be accommodating three Earths inside it. There are 67 moons of Jupiter, but out of which four are much massive and they are called as the Galilean moons. We'll just quickly see which are the four. Io is a very dry and volcanic and the third largest of Jupiter's moons. The second one being Europa, which is covered with a thick layer of ice and is the fourth largest of Jupiter's moons. The third one is Ganymede, which is larger than Mercury. It is the largest moon in the solar system. The last and the fourth one is Callisto, which is composed of ice and rock, and it is the second largest and furthest of Jupiter's moons. The sixth planet is Saturn, a beautiful planet, which is the second largest planet in the solar system. And it is also a gas giant and is primarily made of hydrogen itself. As we all know that Saturn is famous for its rings. These rings are made up of ice and rocks. The structure of the Saturn ring will be like this when you observe closely. While Saturn has 62 moons, Titan is the only one which is the largest. In fact, it is the second largest moon in the solar system. Titan is the only moon to have a dense atmosphere. Moving on to the seventh planet, Uranus, which has the third largest planetary radius and the fourth largest planetary mass in the solar system. Uranus is also mostly composed of gases like hydrogen and helium, but it has higher water composition and cooler temperature so that it can be classified as an ice giant. Uranus has a ring system, which is obviously smaller than Saturn, but its uniqueness is it rotates on its slide. Uranus has 27 natural satellites revolving around it but none of them are impressive so that we are not going in details for the moons of Uranus. The eighth planet is Neptune, which is the farthest planet from the sun in the solar system. It is the fourth largest planet by diameter and third largest by mass. Neptune's composition is very similar to that of Uranus. So it is also having the same name ice giant. Neptune was the first planet found by mathematical predictions. Coming to the moon of Neptune, it has got 14 moons, but Triton is far the largest. It is primarily made of frozen nitrogen. This is the moon of Neptune. All the eight planets we have discussed, but in the outer region, of the solar system, there are some exciting meteors. The Kuiper belt is a region of the solar system beyond the planets. It is similar to the asteroid belt, but the size is big, maybe 20 times wide and 20 to 200 times as massive as the. In the Kuiper belt, 
there are four dwarf planets. The first one, Pluto, is very familiar, right? Because it was previously classified as planets, but now it is classified as dwarf planet. In addition to Pluto, there are Aries, Macmeg, and Huma in the Kuiper belt. There are many other terrestrial bodies, which are commonly called as trans-Neptunian objects. Pluto, which was the former ninth planet, is the largest and most famous object in the Kuiper belt. It has five moons, Charon being the largest. The New Horizon space probe will travel past Pluto, showing us more of the Kuiper belt in the next few years. As you know that astronomy is a still developing area, we have to wait for the results of many more researchers to get to know more details about our solar system. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day ahead. I hope all of you enjoyed this journey to the solar system. Thank you once again.